You woke up. Wonderful. I was worried that the Kupala evil spirits might prove fatal, even for such a powerful witch as you. You! What's going on? Where am I? Where's the Black Book? Calm down, Vasilisa. You don't possess this ancient artifact anymore. We've taken it for a more practical goal than yours. Ah, I seem to remember now. I saw you and the spinner at the forest edge. I should have finished you off that time in Vilgard. But I'm grateful for this mercy, as well as for what you did for breaking so many seals. What a pity. You can't even fathom all the power that even just one granted wish can bestow. You can't handle it! Let me out, and you'll understand why even Kupala Chors weren't able to stop me. Perhaps, perhaps. But you won't get out this time. I've sealed you in. You have neither your Zagavors, nor your Sorceress items. What a pity you weren't able to keep the flower of Polopodiabhuta. It was destroyed when the seal was broken, I presume. I should have known you to be Kaldun even that time at Zimskaya Station. You couldn't have known that I was a Kaldun the same as you. But I do recall our first meeting. You're alive only because you've done so much to break the seals. My mentor wanted to open the last one with your very life, but I stopped her. What? Am I supposed to thank you now? Maybe you are. You're not here in your web, aren't you? If I had the book the first day, all of this trouble could have been avoided. Neither you nor your Igor understand the true power of the artifact. I couldn't trust you with a wish. So you're the spinner's apprentice. You hit it quite well. Even my grandpa didn't know. I wouldn't be so sure. You deceived him. Hmm. Where is the black book? Stop worrying about your artifact. But may this knowledge brighten your confinement. The book is safely in the hands of my mentor. Soon I will join her with a well-crafted wish, and my goal will be achieved. Nice move. I've done all the hard work, and you're the one reaching your goal, eh? You may well despise me, but know this. I'm doing the greater good for all of Russia. There is no comparison between our quarrel and the end result of my efforts. You will soon see the greater benefits of my mission. How did you manage to capture me? You were too weak from your fight with the Kupala Chorts. I brought you to my humble mansion and locked you up with the Zagavar. Not long ago, I was a prisoner of your mentor as well. It was quite hard to escape. And that's why I employ additional means to your confinement. The door is locked with the lock as well. Let me out. If not me, then my grandpa will get to you. I don't think he cares about you that much. Nonsense! I don't have any more time for talking. I have to get back to wishcrafting. So much depends on it. Wait! Let me out! Damn it! The door is locked. Well, I can handle regular locks, I suppose. But there's that zug of Hervé's. I have to look around. Uh, he took all my herbs and items. Very well. I'll catch my breath, then escape. And then I'll get my book back. Iron bars, slimy from the dampness of the cellar, block your path. You try to open the door, but it's locked. Your palm still remembers the piercing pain of the monastery needle, and you feel as if the flower is throbbing inside your hand. You touch the lock, and it falls open with a quiet click. You open the door, but can't take a step. Alexander's barrier of sorcery still remains. There's nothing inside the bucket. 
and Ukhwat is standing with its prongs turned upward. There's a small hole in the bench, and that's it. Well, I've no time to waste in his dungeons. I have to break the Zagavor. Or should I look some more for that enchanted item? There's some kind of crack in the wall. And there's a bit of hay inside. This is my pistier. Short seems to want some work again. Some hay, and that's it. Nothing else. Well, I've no time. Or should I look some more for that enchanted eye? I can rely only on myself. A simple Zagavar won't be enough to hold me. There's some item here that he put the Zagavar on. Very well. Where's the source of Alexander's sorcery? Bucket, maybe. Hmm. I'm unfamiliar with such sorcery, though. No. It's the oven fork. It is set by the door with the prongs facing upward for a reason. <sighs> I can't reach. So what do we have here? Got captured once more? It's always such a pain with your boyfriends. Proshka! You thought I'd leave you here with this caldons? Your companion drops the oven fork, and the magical barrier collapses in an instant. You thank your savior, and prepare to continue along your way. A low vaulted hall leads into the depths of the mansion. It's hard to see in the murky twilight of the cellar, and you freeze in place when you hear a loud hiss ahead. There is something stirring in the dark. Broshka grins and sneaks ahead. A blinding flash tears the dark, and the horrified devils in ambush scatter, like bugs at the sight of Voipi. Like bugs. A cloud of dust swarms out of old barrels from the wine cellar. Neither man nor evil spirit has set foot here for a long time. Barrels bear inscriptions in an unfamiliar tongue. You absent-mindedly examine one vessel after another when you finally notice one strange lone bottle on the table. Coming closer, you see some strange Khaldun symbols on its label. It seems that only the ever-present mold remembers this pantry. The mold grows strongly in the presence of evil spirits, and has spread its dimly glowing bushes through all of the reserves of the mansion's owner. A couple of susiedkas are hiding in the corner, their eyes gleaming with frightened embers. Don't eat us, witch! We have nothing! Nothing! Only mold! Ugh. I wouldn't eat you even if I was starving. Your fur is all moldy and dusty. Calm down. I won't eat you. Poor Susiedkos. Why are you so scared? Oh, whew. I thought one of Alexander's demons crawled to our place. It's scary in the mansion these days. The stronger our master gets, the more demons flock here. Some are quite evil. They can gobble you up for good. Now, I understand my godfather that ran away from his Khaldun master. We can't manage with our Khaldun. No one even knows if he is the one. Tell me about your master. There's nothing to tell. He was a good man, and his parents were fine people. That is, before they start learning black magic. We've been in hiding since then. For how long? Half a century is my guess. He's a good guy, tries to help people. He wants to do good, but it's turned out as it usually does. The Kaldunan secret? Well, everyone sees you as a witch and 
respect you as one. Our Alex tries to conceal his gift. Such is the way of secret sorcerers. Well, maybe I'll manage to scare off some of the demons. You'll have an easier life than I'd imagine. Whoa! Thanks! We didn't expect any help, if I may be frank. Here we go. Some more free supplies for your journey. Your gloomy thoughts are fueled by thick shadows around you. Before the darkness engulfs you entirely, you see a flicker of a candle near the staircase, and you rush towards it. You step back from the toothy swan. Time is short, and you have to decide what to do next. I am quite impressed. No book, yet you managed to defeat the Lock, the Zagova, and even the demons. Oh, magnifique! Please excuse the French that I've acquired while serving Mon Sorcier. So you're a demon these days. You know your name is already dead. No one remembers it. What of it? At least I've never hunted garbage heaps as a cat, mon ami. Better to be a garbage cat than a demon in hell. Enough of that. First, let me tell you, Vasilisa, enchanté de faire votre connaissance. And let me tell you that I am immune to your Zagabars. Charmant. You won't scare me with your fancy magic words. You'd better let me pass, you demon. Mais non, I can't do this. A direct order from Alexandre. But as I said, I am impressed. He said to me, Don't let Vasilisa pass. She has no powers left. I think there is a small loophole there, n'est-ce pas? I'm quite capable even without the book, as you see. Right, vraiment? Quite so, quite so. But I would like to see that for myself. How about a duel, in our language of nowhere's, avec la langue de sorcier? But be ready. One mistake and your soul is mine. I see that you're no ordinary Shishiga. What's true is true. Oh, I am as old as some of your friends. He was an ancestor of the Chutes. So, do you enjoy your new calling? Boiling in the cauldrons of hell, that is? It's not so bad, mon vieil ami. You should try it out. But it is true. I used to be the patron of ancient tribes. And now I guide the neophytes to the wonderful world of witchcraft. How should I call you, Toothy Swan? Oh, I've had uh, quite a lot of names, but now I prefer to be called uh, Pierre. Pierre? I swear with Yan, you are as mad as a hatter. Oh, but let me be whoever I want. Kelvi. How long have you known Alexander? Since he climbed through my moor, and that was a day of nightly wonders. Quel mystère de la magie. He's a good fellow, mon camarade. But he gave me strange tasks. To plow a field, to cut down some trees. And he's never happy with my results. But that is the nature de la diable. We spoil and curse, but we can't create. But hell is full of rumors. They say that the book is in the spinner's hands and that she wants to exterminate all charts. What do you mean? I thought she wanted to tame them for useful work. Imagine that. I don't have the book, but I still remember my Zagavars. Oh, let's see then. Défends-toi!
The cellar door is locked tight. You turn your gaze to the palm of your hand where the flower was sewn. Concentrating your power on your palm, you reach for the door, but suddenly realize that your hand is invisible. Your companion smiles condescendingly. Such a trick can fool a mortal, but not an evil spirit. A dazzling light falls on the dusty cellar staircase and drags you inside to the richly decorated hallway. Your breath is taken away by the sheer splendor of a mansion you've only imagined from looking at pictures. Demons dressed in strange black and white costumes are here and there among the Baroque curls of the rich staircase leading to the second floor. One of them rushes towards you. You prepare all your eloquence to stop the demon before it attacks you, but it proves to be unnecessary. It seems the Chort, in a black dress coat, wants to offer you an entire tray of delicacies. Welcome. Welcome, dear lady. I didn't know our master had guests. Oh, but put our service to the test. Try this great any. It's delicious. Don't believe me? Ask the other demons. You've never tasted anything as tasty as this. It seems that your strength is returning. If you need me, you only need to say the word. Wait a moment. Tell me... Where is your master? Why, in his office, of course. Should I announce your arrival? No, wait. I will go myself. Let it be a surprise. Ah, what a joy to see such a nice young lady. Please forgive me if I'm speaking too bluntly. What kind of demons are you? Why are you dressed this way? This is the direct order of our master, and we quite like it, of course. Obviously, some may protest this, but me, personally, I'm very happy. And I won't torment Alexander. Even if I get such a chance, I won't. Right, of course you won't. No, I mean it, young lady. It's so much better being a butler than stealing milk. <sighs> Everything will change when other demons realize that. What do you have here on your tray? The best appetizers for our guests. Would you like some? No, I'm not hungry. As you wish. If you need me, you only need to say the word. Wait a moment. Tell me... I should start to seek out your master. Of course, of course, young lady. You just need to follow this staircase. A winter garden is growing here, under the dome of ornate glass. Your eye skips from one herb to another. The greenery is full of exotic plants the likes of which you've never seen. Alexander's chorts are tending to this place. Such exotic greenery you've only seen in some of Yegor's books and heard mentioned in stories about faraway lands. You've also found some familiar magical herbs. The chorts are working in this garden according to the instructions of their master. Oddly enough, they are quite good at it. Some are dissatisfied with their job, while others have resigned themselves to their fate. You manage to learn some demon handling tricks that Alexander uses to drill these chorts. As soon as you utter the first words of Azagavar, the demons depart. They manage to warn you not to tread on the plants before leaving. So much knowledge. You wouldn't be able to find such a vast collection of books in your Izba, nor in the churches of Vilgert and Cherdin. For a moment, you forget both the Black Book and your mission. Consumed by the dreams of reading all of these bits of treasure, the sudden glimmer of moonlight in the eyes of the stuffed bear helps you to return to your thoughts. 
Some books are written in languages unknown to you, while others are too lengthy to be understood in such a short time. Nevertheless, you find a collection of epics and legends, which you decide to borrow from Alexander. The unkind eyes of the bear make you wary. You take a step closer to realize that the stuffed animal is filled with chorts. As soon as you touch the bear, it starts to move. The chorts don't seem to like your company. The walls are richly decorated with incredible lifelike portraits and landscape paintings more impressive than you've ever seen in your life. This craftsmanship is incomparable not only to the primitive Lubox, but even to illuminated manuscripts. Several startled shorts drop their dusting rags and scatter away out of fright. You may go on your way. The winding halls are as full of demons as a stove corner is full of cockroaches. Some are doing quite useful work, it seems. Jorts are scrubbing floors and washing the copper furniture handles. Several spirits are bolder than the rest. They rush to attack. You enter Alexander's office. He looks through you, seeing nothing. The fur and flower does its job properly. The table is littered with papers, blueprints, and magical books. Your captor walks back and forth, quietly muttering something incoherent, as if in a trance. They look like Alexander. 
got a strange mechanism, and the devils are spinning inside. There are some pictures here. They look like mechanism for charts to operate. These are his attempts to craft a perfect wish. A big window towers behind Alexander. Directly under it is an iron fence with sharp spikes sticking up. I don't know such sorcery. Your captor nervously walks back and forth through the office, trying to come up. These are the items that Alexander took away. You may grab them but the invisibility will subside. A big window towers behind Alexander. Direct... You open the window behind Alexander. These are the items that Alexander took away. You may grab them, but the invisibility will subside. Hard at work, eh? What? How's that possible? You, Vasilisa? How? From where? It seems that the invisibility wears off if I talk to anyone. Here is our old friend. He must be thinking that the saints themselves brought you here. That must be the very same magnetism that I've heard so much about. The kind that moves people and objects about. It's none of your business. Now give me back my stuff, or else. As you can see, I have enough strength left to handle all of your pitiful defenses. Yes, that is true, Vasilisa. I won't argue that. But then again, I can't quite agree. What if I do return your items? Will you go back to the spinner? Don't try my patience. Your mentor wouldn't even want you to have the book. A fine yarn you're spinning. Yes, yes. I'm sure he wants the same thing that I do. Shartokrasi. What are you talking about? Would Igor not wanting me to have this book? He gave it to me himself! He has his reasons, I'm sure. My noble goal could be one of them. Yes, I told him all about Chartocracy myself when he locked me inside your izba. And even before that, he told me all about Nikolai's wedding. What? You don't know your mentor well enough, Vasilisa. Lies. Don't believe me? Ask the spinner then. Where does she keep my book? In her as well, where else? But she won't be able to defeat her. You still underestimate my power. I'm aware of your power. But hers is greater still. She may have bestowed her charts to me, but her power has remained with her nonetheless. Don't try and scare me. It is but warning. What's that chortocracy you're talking about? Well, the title could be better, that's true. But the concept itself is sound. Imagine our motherland, where the strongest and wisest Kaldun rules, and his power grows yet, since he passes his chords by inheritance to his successor, the next in line, whose power almost matches his own. Right. A Kaldun instead of a Tsar is just what we need. And don't forget that the demons will also work, and only for the common good. And this is indeed possible. You must have already seen only a small sample of what I've done with my charts in the mansion. Believe me, the chartocracy is possible in Russia. We have just one seal to break. I've had enough of your ramblings. I don't even know what to do with this fellow. His philosophy is quite silly, don't you think? Thrice we've dueled. There won't be a fourth time. We have nothing to argue about. You decided to give me the book? To give up your wish? Oh no. I won't give my wish away. But maybe I can persuade him in another way. You're from nobility! You can't just steal the book! Vasilisa, believe me. My mission is more important than the means to achieve it. Everything for the motherland! Then we have nothing further to discuss. Grab your pathetic book of spells and defend yourself! <laughs>
Alexander finally falls, losing his last bits of strength. You're trying to curb your rage. This is the third time that this Khaldun has tried to stop you, and you really don't want to deal with him again. You exhale slowly and leave the man unconscious. His goals were noble, after all. Who knows what else he can achieve with his shorts and ideas. When he regains his strength, the last seal will already be broken. You take the bag containing your belongings and prepare to continue on your journey. You must not hesitate. The spinner must not break the last seal. No time to go back home. I have to hurry for the book. It's good that I've already visited Spinner's bar. I don't think it will be hard for you to get back the book. No, that woman can be more powerful than Nessie's or the Fern Fire. Who knows? I didn't trade blows with her. But she doesn't have the friends you have. I haven't seen any companions either. We'll see soon enough. Arr, arr. It's all right, Miss Elisa. Even without the book, you're much stronger than any other Kaldun. You've already dealt with Sashka, and you'll deal with the old crown. The real problem here is this rain. My fur is all wet. Ugh. You have goosebumps, a sign of a devilish presence. What kind of wisdom do you possess? That which comes. You stop on the outskirts of the village, trying to catch your breath. Clouds of your breath are torn apart by the slanting cold rain. The spinner's izba is not far away, and you decide to spend some time preparing for a meeting with this dangerous witch. Peasants cross themselves at the mere mention of the old witch. Everyone knows that meeting her is dangerous, but many still ask for her help. No village can survive without a Khaldun. The peasants shrug their shoulders. You use the sorcery of the fern, and pain shoots through your palm. Trying to move silently, you get to the spinner's izba, but it turns out that it is not that easy to get inside unnoticed. There is no Riddler skull this time, but there are three other guardians. They watch the path to the izba vigilantly, and you hear their quiet whispers. Your companion brings back news of the sentinels. All three are familiar to you. One of them is Akulina. 
my god! Akulina! Who else is here? Agafya Filipovna, are you... What are you doing here? The peasant women bizarrely sway from side to side. They start to shake and mutter something when they hear your voice. Akulina, what's going on? The horror. Vasilisa, help her! The spinner's witchcraft. The Zagavar I need is in the black book. We'd better hurry over to that hag. You are startled when Akulina grabs you by the wrist. What you're after, you won't achieve. Everything was in vain. The road leads to damnation. You will find only pain. The otherworldly voices die down, and only the indiscernible muttering of the women continues. Akulina has turned into a shaman. We should break her enchantment quickly. I myself don't mind uttering prophecies, says Anikota, but something isn't right here. You try to touch the belt, but the sorcery of the spinner repels you. Aquilina, where did you get this belt? The spinner gave it to you? We are fated to be under her power until we are dead. She trapped us into the force of her thread. What efforts were in vain? Were all the seals in the book restored? And no one in the heavens, nor under the earth. To open the seals had his doom. And those who tried, only then saw. Darkness, death, and the tomb. What pain, Akulina? For years about it, you knew. With chalk, you circle strewn. You shall be greeted with sharpest pain. Until it will drive you insane. I have to hurry. All the sorcery. Who knows what her sorcery will do to them. I need the Black Book. The black hole in place of the spinner's throne leads into strange darkness covered in cobwebs. You hear the inviting whispers of the gloom of the abyss that leads to unknown depths. The black book is out there, somewhere. The damp earth escapes your grasp, and you fall down into the cold darkness of the pit. The pain of the impact leaves you breathless. You try to catch your breath, but the air in the bottom is wet and stale. You manage to get up and look around. A black, winding passage leads into the depths of the cave. You exchange worried glances with your companion and rush into the bowels of the underworld. It's hard to walk and even breathe amidst the thick strands of cobwebs. You have to push away one white shroud after another, and soon your hair and dress are covered with dust and small spiders. It's good to have the skull lantern, because the darkness is too deep even for your sharp eyes. You try to make out something on the ceiling, but it's covered in cobwebs. A white cocoon pulsates in the middle of the cave hall. You hear a rustle of spiders running away from the cold light. The cocoon quietly crackles with cobwebs in rhythm with the pulsations. You touch the web and tear it down like a shroud. There is a working loom beneath it. An exhausted chort is working on the contraption. His black hide is tied with belts of the spinner, and spiders swarm all about him, sucking the last bits of strength from the spirit. The loom is covered with sorceress signs that are designed to keep this short working for all eternity. 
You tear away the belts, and the short flies up, incredulous that he has been released. Before disappearing into black smoke, your gazes cross, and you see something strange. Is it a hint of gratitude? There are some mushrooms beneath the bench. You take them with you. The loom is covered with sorceress signs that are designed. Swarms of small spiders flee before you. You reach a pale grotto, wrapped in the pale threads of cobwebs, and find three cocoons there. To your horror, they have unmistakably human forms. You take a step back when a rush of spiders escapes the otherwise empty cocoon. Inside, you find the emaciated mummy of a short peasant. A gold ring glimmers on his finger. The light dims momentarily when you remove the ring from the corpse. Inside is the blackened corpse of a child beyond recognition. Only the whites of his deadly eyes stare at you, unblinking. You reel back from the corpse, dazzled by the stench of decay. The narrowing path is blocked by thick cobwebs. White, slimy threads are still fresh, oozing with the pale juices of their creator. You try to find a gap in this unexpected obstacle, but, alas, the cave is well blocked. You use the sorceress power of the fern, and the cobwebs fall down, forming harmless pools of slime. There's not much cobweb here in this little cave nook. Instead, there are bizarre, multicolored threads hanging in clusters from the ceiling, forming strange passages and patterns. Some threads are burned, and the floor is strewn with old ash. Threads that seemed chaotic at first glance seem to form an intricate pattern. Why would a spinner need so many different threads? This is a divination for sure. Complicated one at that. I would guess she has learned many things with these threads. Which thread burns faster? That is what will come true. The spinner has her own system here. A complicated sorcery. There's not much cobweb here in this little cave nook. Instead, there are bizarre, multicolored threads hanging in clusters. You notice the chorts hanging in clusters from the cobwebs in the dark corners of this cavern passage. At first, you think that these are other victims of the monstrous spiders, but soon you realize that these chorts are not only alive, but are also playing a game of cards and haven't noticed your arrival. You come across a small cave hall furnished in a similar manner to that of an ordinary room in an izba. Here you find a hearth and a table, a red corner, and even a spinning wheel with yarn. Only the log walls are absent, with a rocky cave wall in their place. These stones are all heavily chalked with some strange, magical symbols. An old spinning wheel is skillfully decorated with a diamond pattern, 
You touch the yarn and a flock of small spiders scatters away. The rustling of their small legs resembles mocking laughter. Strange letters and geometric patterns pulsate with a sorcerous glow invisible to ordinary mortals. You are unfamiliar with both the inscriptions and the drawings. It seems that the spinner borrowed some knowledge of foreign witchcraft from her apprentice. It is strange to see peasant utensils so deep underground. It seems like this is all the furniture that's missing from the spinner's izba on the surface. Lisa, you know I'm glad to see you. I've been waiting for you. I knew that he wouldn't be able to hold you. My guards told me about you long ago, but you took the book with such skill. This is my book. You thought you'd get away with it. What are you talking about, girl? I wanted to give it back to you. Only such a powerful sorcerer as yourself can harness its might. We'll need a dead sorcerer for the dead seal. That's what it says, right? My sight is not as good as it used to be, child. I'm not a child. There are two Kaldoons here. I think the book will be satisfied with you. <laughs> what a smart girl. But... I won't do. I gave all my chores to Alexander, unlike some other Kaldus. I am not much of a witch these days. But then again, we have to get to the crossroads for the ritual, right? Oh, my memory is not so good, you know. That's none of your business. Well, well, I know what is needed. Fine. Fine. We'll go together to the crossroads, and I will help you. We'll do everything together, girl. 
Victor. Stop spinning your yarn. I know that you only want to get the hold of the wish. Why? Oh, why would I need it, Vasilisa, darling? The fact is that we want the same thing. So you want to free my beloved from hell? Of course, of course I do. I want to help you. Not that Alexander, that liar, he only spins his wishes for himself. That damn chartocrat. Everything is in fact very simple. We should get rid of all the demons. And then, when there are no demons left, who is to keep your boy in hell? You believe that the book can kill all the demons? I don't know about that. Why would that short help me then? Well, yeah, the legend says so, doesn't it? Just imagine, no Kaldunas, no devil. We'll live as if in heaven itself. Well, let's join forces. Nice story, but I'm not buying it. Why should I believe the one who imprisoned me and locked me up? He would have helped me in the beginning as my grandpa if you really wanted to. <laughs> Your grandpa? Do you think that he's helping you? He never loved you. He doesn't care about you a bit. As I don't care about Alexander. Lies! Don't believe me. And why do we take apprentices? You know it yourself so that the Chorts will let us pass away. He needed you solely for that reason. And I know that well. I need that damn nobleman for the exact same reason. Well, let's be frank with each other. We, women, have to stick together. I'll help you open the seal as a friend. You're worse than the Chorts. It would suit me better be friends with Satan himself. Damn wench. Your man doesn't need such a fool anyway. You think I can't handle you? Don't you see what demon I have in my service? This is the Permian Chirang himself. He will guide you to the afterlife.
Vasilisa, home to your sagas. I'm sure we can come to an agreement. And give you the chance to put a knife in my back? Never.
wench. I should have killed you when I had the chance, instead of listening to that fool. It's too late to cry now. I won't be caught in your nets again. find your acquaintances free of the spinner's witchcraft when you escape the dungeon. They are still dazed a bit, but you feel that this sorcery will soon subside. You find a belt spun from cobwebs nearby. Without the witch's curse, it will make a fine amulet. I've dealt with this spinner at last. And now to find old Yegor. She was lying, right? Of course. This woman speaks lies just as easily as she breathes. Very well. Now back home, to Vilgert. Grandpa, are you here? Grandpa! Hmm, there's no one. The bench above the hearth is empty as well. Wait, there's something inside the stove. This bottle. Kupala's ointment. Why would Grandpa need it? Maybe he's trying to deal with this rain? Huh. I wish we could have made it earlier. Almost empty. This much won't increase my powers. But I'll be able to fly. And you should stay home. I'll find him quickly with this. I just need a moment to catch my breath. I can fly with you. We'll find the old man. Don't bother. I'll be back shortly. The last thing I need is to have to look for you in the rain. Grrr. Don't forget, I'm not your average crow. All right, Vasilisa, as you see fit. I don't know, Vasya. Is it such a good idea to go alone? It'll be quicker this way. We'll be back soon, me and Grandpa. I feel a bit uneasy. Perhaps it's my sorcery finally waking up. It's just the gloomy weather, with this rain and all. Don't let it get to your head. Hmm. Soon your coffin lid will break. I'll take you out from that road. From the afterlife myself. I've broken all the seals but one. I've done so much. I've suffered so much. And so many people have helped me. One was turned into a wolf before I saved him. And saved another from werewolves. I've been everywhere. Walked every road. To get to your Yurizba without doors and windows. I've been to a hidden village and saved it from the fog. I've walked all over, my shoes almost worn to bits, to perform the ritual of the fern flower. I met an evil witch in the town of Cherding, and cleansed the possessed icon, and healed Iskor from the fever. For you I took the flower, the color of the sun itself. <laughs> I don't need to send a letter to bring you this news. I will get to you myself. Just you wait. Just be strong for a little while longer. I'll wash myself off in the waters, and all of this sorcery of mine will be gone. <gasps> I don't know what to do. What to think of my grandpa? Where is he now? My father? My mentor? What is he up to? <gasps> you can't help me from beneath Mother Earth. Even if he's up to no good, he won't stop me. I won't be stopped at the very door. It is not in vain that I've opened the seals. A great power in me. It will be enough to bring you back to me.
you in Ari's bar? Why did you make the ointment? You didn't say anything about it to me. If we need it for the seals, then you should have told me. I could have helped you. Together we would... Vasilisa! I don't know whether I can do this! I must! I must! Grandpa, what are you saying? Vasilisa! Only one seal is left. The time has come to give me back the book. What? What about... what about my wish? Believe me, you won't need it. I don't understand. You wanted to take the book from me this whole time? So the spinner was telling the truth. You raised me just to give your chores to someone? So what? As if you didn't know it yourself. Didn't I teach you what it means to be a Kaldun? I've always wanted what is best for you. And you? I want to be a peasant, want to get married. Ah! Didn't you see how these peasant women live? Every second child they bear dies in his sleep. I raised you as a witch. You would have been forfeit were it not for me. Grandpa, I'm grateful for what you've done, and I always will be. But the book? You wanted to help me with my beloved one yourself, didn't you? I know well enough what you need, girl. You always listen to what I say. Now do the same and give me back the book. I can't, Grandpa. I need this wish. I have to save him. Don't argue back with your grandfather. I don't want to harm you, girl, but I need the book. We mustn't waste the wish on that no good boy of yours.
book, Vasilisa! I can't, Grandpa. Don't you forget who took it! It's mine! Not anymore. You gave it away, along with your chores. Zagavars won't be necessary! duty one last time. I know what's better for you. Breaking the last seal of the book. You think that's an easy feat, do you? Better if I did that. I'm old and beyond forgiveness. Stop it! I'll forgive you and we'll live as we used to. You forgive me? You think your beloved one killed himself? I did everything for your sake, even forfeiting my own salvation! Duh. No. This, this can't be. That was the only way to become a true Kaldor. No. No! I... I loved you so much! But you ruined everything!
Vasilisa! Takes its toll. Enough fooling around. Give me the book. Vasha, I'll make everything right. How? How can you change everything that you've done? If not for your sorcery. Everything could have been fine. I would live a simple life, like everyone else in Vilgar. I never needed your chores. Ha! You don't know yourself well enough. If not for me, the Vilgort rebel would send you to the graveyard faster than you'd learn your first war. But enough of this, Vasilisa. I know you'll never forgive me. And you won't have to. I'll turn the tides of time back with my will. There won't be anything, neither Prokopi nor Timoshka nor the book itself! She would never leave the Sukharev Stawa! There will be nothing then! Neither my horns, nor your grief! I don't believe you! I don't! You needn't hold on to your book! It's true that your fiancé is dealing with charts! Passing aerial tall houses, I bet. Soon he'll meet Saint Peter at the gates. And that's why I need to give you the book? How can I trust you? You'll have to, Vasilisa. <laughs>
Vasilisa! The gates of hell are opening! Then get it back. Stand back, Grandpa! And let you rob us of this one chance! Never! too powerful for a toothless Kaldun like me. I don't regret my decision. Who cares about your man? But I did what I had to do for my granddaughter. Just look at yourself. The Perim Gubernia has never seen such a powerful witch. There perhaps hasn't been one so powerful even in the whole of Russia! I don't want to kill you, Grandpa! Enough! Do what you must! I didn't raise a weakling. You wouldn't have broken the seals otherwise, even if you were thrice destined to do so! I am ready to face the abyss. I always have been. Well, what are you waiting for? Do it, Fasan! The time has come to break the seventh sea.
What the devil are you? Welcome, my lady. What's going on? I can't raise my hand to cross myself. You were initiated a long time ago, Vasilisa. And now you are here, before the gates of hell. It means that the baptism is undone. Now you will have to manage without the sign of cross. However, there is a little strength in human brains. But don't despair, since the Black Book is with you. You won't get it! You shouldn't let wild fear assail your soul. That would cause you to recoil from the noblest of solutions. I know that many wish for its power. I don't need it. My power is in my connections. I only wish to help you, my lady. Please, let me be your guide. You know my name, but I don't know yours, it seems. Prince Citri, at your service. What a strange name. The name Vasilisa seems weird, as well to the ear of a demonic creature. So it's here, the abyss? Before you are the gates, for it's seen about. You've came all this way, but I never doubted your strength for a moment. So you knew about me? For a long time, I believed that you would reach the Black Book, my lady. I'm no lady, just a girl from Vigor. Oh, but the one who broke all the seals has so much more power than an ordinary girl. Much more. I'm here to guide you, like Virgil. It is not an easy journey through wilderness of hell. I came here for... Uh, I don't even know who or what to look for. Was it all in vain? No. I must find a way. A wish? It is true. The wish of the one who opens the Black Book will be fulfilled. How can I make the book fulfill it? But who am I to know this? Just a mere prince. The only place where we can find the answers is the throne of hell. Then guide me to this throne. And how much time is left until the 40th day is over? Don't worry, my lady. Time passes differently. And will be as swift as the hounds of hell. But what is that? Several demons are flying towards us. The rumors have already spread, it seems. They are flying to get your help. 